Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Hub. I'm your host, Gamer K, and it is time again for another look at Marvel's Villainous here on Villain Month in the Game Hub. And we are continuing that with what I just said the Mad Titan himself from the starter set of Marvel's Villainous Infinite Power. Go check out the Go check out uh, all the Marvel, all the uh, Villainous games. They've got Disney Villainous, they've got Marvel Villainous, and this year they added Star Wars Villainous for all you fans of the dark side. And I heard that Boba Fett is his own expansion coming out later this year. Just for all you Star Wars Villainous fans, Villainous is a great game. Go check it out. And obviously we're here to review the Mad Titan, his cards, and how to win as... Thanos. And as always, we are going to take a quick look. We're going to take a first look of his game piece. And like I said, I love how, again, with Disney Villainous, they, they can, even with this game, when this game came out, they decided to keep what they were going and have their pieces be, um, uh, translucent colored plastic, which I love. And I love how for Marvel, they made it a solid, Color plastic, and I do love what they did here. Basically, the Infinity Gauntlet here with it, with the Mad Titan's helmet, with the horns, with it. Oh, his, oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, on one side it's the Infinity Gauntlet, and the other side it's his helmet, which I think is really freaking badass. I think that's perfect for the Mad Titan. And now I'm just gonna adjust the camera to show you the game board, and here we have. Thanos, and that gorgeous, mad, that is a beautiful uh, art st artwork for Thanos. I hold the galaxy in my palm, ready to crush it like an eggshell. And he, and I do love, uh, for, for Thanos, they really could have gotten away with doing like a basic yellow, which I'm glad they didn't do because it would have looked poorly on here. So, I do love how they kind of went with this uh, kind of bronzish yellow, which I love. Now, let's open up his board and see his realm, which is really, really great. We've got Sanctuary 2, which is that gorgeous, gorgeous artwork of his battleship, which is pretty cool. Titan, very nice artwork of that. And then we have the Infinity Well, which is that. I mean, it's a simple artwork, but it's really good. And Nowhere, which I do love how they went to do it with this artistic, comic y style. I mean, obviously, it's for the Marvel villainous, but just that artwork alone looks a lot better than the one uh, that's in the movie because the one in the movie looks more uh, like a Transformers head than anything else. And then we have our specialty area, and then we have. His objective, collect all six Infinity Stones. Now, Thanos' big objective, again, is to collect the Infinity Stones, which are represented here with these six Infinity Stone tiles of all six. And I'm going to get to those in a minute. So basically, his objective is, throughout the game, Thanos will be using his cards to introduce random stones to the board, to the game. But sadly, Thanos... Uh, cannot obtain them immediately. These stones will be sent to a random character, and it will attach either to on their uh, on their board or it will attach to one character uh, on their board, one ally uh, on the opponent's board. So Thanos will have to use his re his relocate uh, action to send his men his uh, his uh his minions over to the other board, defeat the character, and they will then obtain the the, infin the the Infinity Stone, and then he will have to get them back onto his board, and then afterwards, here it is, the uh, the Power Stone, uh, when it's uh, being used by another character, but the minute it goes to Thanos, it immediately becomes a specialty, because in, the, in his deck, he does so yeah, Thanos, unlike the other characters, doesn't have any specialties in his deck. So once he obtains an Infinity Stone, his special the stone will become a part of the gauntlet and placed into his specialty area where he can have access to the effects. So yeah, he's got that. And also the player who, who has the Infinity Stone can use their ability with the activate action, which is awesome. 
And since in the Marvel Villainous, uh, the specialties are kind of like the conditions for um, for for uh, Disney Villainous, I go over those first. So first we have the Power Stone, which is the nice purple stone. Uh, activate. Place two power, two plus one strength tokens on an ally you control. And on the specialty, Thanos can do the can do the same thing. So basically, the effect is the same thing. It's just for Thanos to use. And again, uh, if you're playing if you're playing with a group of fr with your friends uh, and you don't know how to determine which stone gets um uh, chosen, because again, it says randomly. That way, someone can't pick the stone they want. My I, my suggestion is uh, put these uh, specialties. Uh, put these car, put these tiles in the uh, in a hat or something, and every time uh, Thanos activates the the cards to bring out an Infinity Stone, have someone draw a stone, and then that one will be played. That's a that's a fair way to do it because it's not fair for the opponents to decide which stone gets activated and when, and it's not fair if Thanos does. So that's a fair way to do it. Uh, then we got the Space Stone, nice blue stone that they spent so many movies trying to get. And this one appear was in uh, frickin' Guardians. Great. Well, you know, let's not forget that Peter Quill dropped the Power Stone. Okay, hang on. For those of you who know that, you know. <laughs> And then we got the Space Stone, again, from so many of the movies. Uh, activate. You may relocate any number of your allies. So move them from an event to your around your area on the board. And the Space Stone right there. And I do like how they do put it on their spot on the Infinity Gauntlet, which is really nice. Purple. Uh, then we got the blue right there. Uh, same ability. You may relocate any number of your allies. And then we got the Time Stone. Thank you, Doctor Strange. Uh, gain one power and then draw a villain card. So basically, yeah, you just get to draw a card from your deck. And again, same ability on the other side. Uh, uh, Mind Stone. Hello, Vision. Uh, Mind Stone. Find any card in your deck and then add it to your hand. And again, same thing. Uh, Soul Stone, which we never talk about what he had to do to get it. Or what Hawkeye had to do. Yeah. Soul Stone. Play any ally for free from your discard pile. So basically Monster Reborn. And there we go. And finally we've got the Reality Stone. Which would have been cool if this one was during in a movie. But no, we just get an off-screen uh, obtaining it from Thanos. Uh, perform a Vanquish action. Your allies are not discarded when you use this when you when you use this uh, for Vanquish action. Vanquish action, sorry. And again, same ability on the back. And the minute Thanos gets that six stone, he doesn't have to wait for another turn. He Once he gets all six in specialty, the game is over. And basically... Oh, wait, wrong hand. There we go. <laughs> okay, now we're going on to the... Items. Yes, we're going on to the items first, because that's the way I do things. Uh, Thanos has four effect, four items, and one we got one copy of the Space Throne, which... Hang on, I just gotta adjust it. The Space Throne, which is a great... That's a great image of Thanos. Uh, the location this card is at gains relocate. Which is cool. Which is great. Oh, almost forgot. Uh, always the designs on the back. As you can see, his helmet and the little image of the of the gauntlet right there. We got the six infinity stones around the around him and the helmet, the light, the crumbling universe, the crumbling planet. With the Infinity Gauntlet right there. So if you're a big Thanos fan, like I do with all these uh, Marvel villains, if you want a great tattoo design and you're a big Thanos guy, I would screenshot this. There you go. 
Then we get three copies of Death's Favor. And look at Lady Death. Hello. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, you may choose to perform an activate or vanquish action when you move to this location. A location may not hold more than one of Death's Favor. In more than one copy. So basically you got it at Infinity Well. When you go there... When you move to this location, you may do Vanquish Action or Activate. So since this area has none of that, this is a great place to put it. You get three copies of that. Next, we've got the effects. And Thanos' deck is phenomenally effect heavy. Like, really heavy with effects. And this one is kind of weird. We get three copies of... Taste of Cosmic Power. And there's a really good image of him with... Hang on, I just want to get the name right. A good image of him with... One second. Proxima Midnight. Great picture of him giving her power. Uh, now, the funny thing is, this is an effect card, but the other two copies say item. So I got misprints, which is awesome. So just in case... Uh, and this happens to any of you guys. This is an effect card. Always check out their website just to make double sure. Uh, place a strength token on an ally you control. That ally may immediately vanquish a character at this location with equal or lesser strength and is not discarded after the vanquish. So basically, make sure... Wait, at this location. Oh, so basically a character... Okay. Okay. Yeah, so basically a great way of getting the opponents uh, done quickly. And then we get two copies. Let me see. Two copies. Yes, two copies of Deliver Judgment, which is a great, menacing, this looks like an election campaign poster. <laughs> uh, choose a location with an infinity stone. Relocate up to two allies you control to that location. Place a plus strength token on each ally at that location. So this is another great way of getting your allies across the dimensions into another player's uh, realm in order to get your Infinity Stones. Next, we get two copies of the Mad Titan. And that that's a really powerful image of Thanos being all rage. Ah! <laughs> Choose a character you do not control in the same location as one of your allies, defeat that character. The cost to play this, the Mad Titan is equal to the strength of the defeated creature. So, yeah, another quick way of getting the fight done early. And then we get four copies of Consulting the Well, which is a that really great image of the well with Thanos cult cultivating. Uh, choose another player. That player receives a random unclaimed Infinity Stone. Once played, you may relocate an ally to that location. So again, in order to relocate, you have to have an ally on your board. Just going to say, you can't play a card from your hand. And the fact that you get four of those, that's an e this is basically your number one way of getting an Infinity Stone into the game. And then we get two copies of Warp Reality, which is... Oh, he's blasting through a... He's going through a skyscraper or something. I would have preferred a car that really showed him warping reality around him. Uh, search your discard pile for an effect and put it into your hand. So again, a, a, this is a good way of getting Consulting the Well back into your hand so you can reuse it the number of times you need. And then we have three copies of... A Small Price to Pay, which Thanos looking so menacing with all six Infinity Stones... Gain power plus one additional power for each other villain who controls an Infinity Stone. So again, the more, uh, again, the, the number of players in this game is four at max and two at minimum. So you're going to get a lot of power from this card, which is perfect because you get to pay the cost, which is great. And now we get to the allies here. We get, oh dear Lord, we get, Five copies, five copies of the Legions of Thanos, which are these very disgusting, disgusting looking creatures 
Although I do love the color scheme of them, and this is a great image to show a multitude of them. And they have no special abilities. These are basically used to be sent out, uh, defeat the um, uh, the uh, defeat uh, the other allies, and to obtain the Infinity Stones. Or this can be used as fodder, basically. And then we get the five main the, the five main ones. We've got let's see. Let's start off with Corbus Gal. Galavi, 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 I think that's how you name and that's a really sick image of this, this looks more like a chaotic card than anything else, which is awesome, when Corvus, uh, Gal Galavi is relocated to another player's domain, you may also relocate one, the legions of Thanos ally to his location, so again, he's a basically the way to get your ally, the legion, over to the board in order to increase your strength, and then we get one copy of Black Dwarf, which is the most powerful car uh, creature ally uh, Thanos has with six strength and a three cost power. Black Dwarf cannot be played or relocated to events. So this guy is basically, basically used against uh, any heroes on your board or sending him to defeat the heroes. Uh, the other uh, the other villain's realm to get your Infinity Stones. He cannot be used to do events, which kind of sucks. And then we get one copy of Proxima Midnight, which is a really, really cool pose, a really cool artwork. I'm surprised a bunch of my friends don't cosplay her a lot. I mean, to be honest, I mean, can you imagine wearing that headpiece all day? I mean, come on. When played, defeat a character with Strength 3 or less at Proxima Midnight's location. And then we get one copy of Black Swan. And I don't know who she is, but I would like to know. And, okay, yeah, because of the name, I have to do the joke. Yep, once, time, once upon a time, people, there's your uh, Black Swan joke. And also, uh, is there any other joke? Um, uh, okay, not that Black Swan, but, um, okay, yeah, not that Black Swan. Although, that movie is really good. Um, um, uh, okay, okay! Jeez! Man, I haven't... Man, that's, it's been a while since that's happened. Uh, so anyway, uh, Black Swan. Uh, if Black Swan is at the same location as an Infinity Stone, she gains strength equal to the strongest ally not under your control at her location. So basically, when you she is weak at the start, but then when you send her out to obtain the Infinity Stones, she will be absorbing power from your, from your opponent's strongest uh, allies, which is great, which is great. And we've got one copy of... Ebony Maw, and that is a sick, sick artwork for him. And also, lost, lost, I had to do it. Uh, if Ebony Maw is part of a vanquish action by Thanos to defeat an opponent's ally with an attached Infinity Stone, he is not discarded, which is awesome. So basically, he's his emissary and one of the better ones to use. And finally, we have... The Fate deck. And once again, for for Marvel Villainous, uh, everyone takes their 11-card Fate deck that is with their own character. And then they shuffle it with the 15 generic deck. With the 15 generic deck. And shuffle it up. That way it's got everyone's uh, Fate cards and the generic ones. Also, um, little thing. Um, the... Uh, each set has their own 15 generic uh, fate deck. So I say if you're playing mainly, uh, you guys, I mean, if you guys got a bunch of the uh, Marvel Villainous games, you can basically choose which of the decks you want. You can't, uh, I would recommend not shuffling each uh, uh, generic fate deck cards together. I would keep them in there separate. That way you can just decide which generic deck you want and just shuffle the uh, specific villain uh, fate decks with that. Just my opinion. So here we go. First, we've got Thanos's uh, main event that only affects him. Sacrifices must be made, which has this great image of his five emissaries. 
uh, gathering around him at the gate, which is awesome. So, before moving for each of Thanos' allies in play, you must either pay one power, discard a card or from his hand, or remove the ally. So basically, this card really screws you over the longer it's active, and you got to send people who's got a max of, of seven. Which, again, if we go over the allies... The one that comes close to this is Black Dwarf, but he cannot be played or relocated to events. So this makes this this event a little bit trickier, which I honestly love. I love uh, tricky game uh, being tactical like that. However, when you do complete this as Thanos, Thanos removes one ally controlled by each other villain, which is really good. And then we get three copies of the effect oh also uh the back of the fake cards are all the same no matter who uh yeah it's just the avengers it's just the avengers we got three copies of a stone is found and that is a great image of the multiple characters just reaching for that one stone choose a villain other than thanos that villain receives an unclaimed infinity stone once played they may immediately activate it for free so basically this is a great way Uh, so whoever's doing this can affect another character in order to get Thanos' uh, stones out, but also giving uh, the other players a big of, a bit of an advantage, depending on what stone, which is great. And then we get three copies of What Did It Cost? This is a great image of the heroes fighting uh, t uh, the Mad Titan. This is a great, great image. The targeted villain must discard one card from their hand for each Infinity Stone they control up to the total number of cards in their hand. So, yeah, again, this is mostly for Thanos because, again, he needs to get all the Infinity Stones, but the more stones he gets, the more this card's going to hurt him late in the game because he needs those cards. Which is a great, great strategy to, to make him gathering all the stones and turn it against him. And then we get four heroes in this deck, in this fate deck for him. And one of them is Adam Warlock, which that is a nice image of Warlock. Thanos cannot win the game if Adam Warlock is in Thanos' domain. Well, way to be an a-hole, Adam. <laughs> and then we get one copy of one of my favorite uh, characters. We got... Drax the Destroyer. And that is a s beautiful image of Drax just going in on the legions of Thanos, which is awesome. Plus, he's one of the most powerful characters. Uh, at least two allies must be used to defeat Drax the Destroyer with a vanquish action. That's awesome. Oddly enough, I haven't seen uh, certain members of the Guardians yet in the game, so hopefully soon. And then we get... The sis obviously Thanos' daughters, aka traitors. First, we got Gamora, and that is a gorgeous design of Gamora getting ready for combat. When Gamora is played, defeat a character at her location. If that character is an ally of Thanos, place two plus one strength on Gamora. So she slice, she gains power, and she's a threat to her father. And finally, we got. Nebula. Great, great image of Nebula right there. Uh, <clears throat> when Nebula is played, the targeted player loses power equal to the number of Infinity Stones they control. Place a number of plus one strength tokens on Nebula equal to that power. So again, the more power, the more stones Thanos has, the less power he gain he loses, the more power he loses, and the stronger Nebula gets. I do love how both of the sisters gain power whenever they deal dam whenever they deal some sort of damage to Thanos. Nebula, it's for each stone he gets and reduces his power. For Gamora, it's getting rid of an ally, which I gotta admit is a pretty solid strategy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that is it for this video. So there it is, the Marvel's villainous 
Infinite Power Starters Box with the Mad Titan. And that's all for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining. Hope you enjoyed the guide. Like, comment, subscribe down below. And join me next week where we're going to take a stroll through Gotham and see how some of the villain schemes could be improved. Or could have been improved because they're obviously done. Yeah, basically that wasn't the best uh, segue, but it is what it is. This is Gamer K, logging out.